All right. Well, good morning. I don't know if anybody's here yet. I don't think anybody's here yet. No. <laughs> That's one thing. I got to get my uh, stream starting soon, screen and all that, and the background music, and I think it hit all that back. Um, maybe I'll work on that today. Scalda. Clearing out the horse's field. You have a horse? Wow. How do you find time for 3D printing? In mystery boxes. <laughs> I also need to get better about promoting my streams whenever I'm going to be doing them. <laughs> Morning 3D printer noob. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Da -da -da -da. How are you guys doing this morning? Morning, Vince. Ooh. Ouch. I guess I won't be doing that. Anyway. <laughs> Really busy, yeah, I understand. <clears throat> I understand. <clears throat> At least I can get back to streaming again. Uh, but my son started back to school, and oh. When's the last time you heard a 42-year-old man say, I hate school? <laughs> I should say, I hate getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get my son ready and take him to school. Just four more years. Four more years. And he'll be done with regular school. Oh, wow. See, you got a long way to go. See, my, my son is my youngest... And he's a freshman in high school this year. Oh, wow. Off the rest of the month. Come on down visit Nashville, man. It's a cool little town. Lots of stuff going on. Like live music seven days a week from 10 o'clock in the morning till 2.30 the next morning. And dozens of clubs and each of those clubs have two three stages morning Ryan right and it's not that far nah see I've only got the one marriage only the one and that's all there's ever going to be I swear Told my wife if something happens to her, I'm I'm not I'm not going through this again. <laughs> I'm like, why? Oh, okay, well that makes sense. The uh the marriages in high school seldom last 
Yeah. I'm like, yeah, if something happens to you, I'm never doing this again. I'm I'm at an age now where I'm I'm not having any more kids. I can't have any more kids. And not that I would want to start over at my age. Which is crazy because I, I see friends of mine that I went to high school with that have like two year olds at home. No. <laughs> but I I guess I can look at it that way because I've been a dad since I was 20 years old. You know, I've, I've, I've been doing this for 22 years. I'm, I'm done. Oh, I got to get Blender opened up. I was going to, uh, I was going to buy an add-on that I want. But, uh, I checked my uh, my PayPal balance and uh, I didn't realize it, but apparently GoDaddy had some automatic withdrawals came out yesterday and wiped out my PayPal balance. <laughs> GoDaddy. It was probably something I needed to pay for, so I'm not upset about that. I just haven't logged into GoDaddy yet today and see what the charges were for. But that's what happens when you own, like, I think six domain names. And you have them all set up to auto-renew. I didn't realize it, but yesterday apparently was the day a couple of them got renewed. I used to have a lot more. I, I, I trimmed down. I got rid of some websites that I used to uh, mess around with. Um, when I was a web developer for a living I think I had like 30 and of those I had sites built and working on 20 <laughs> <clears throat> and after I got out of that game I just I, I hate it now I, I don't have any interest in it whatsoever But, uh, yeah, so the I had a PayPal balance yesterday morning and almost bought this add-on that I want for Blender. But I decided, no, I'll do it on stream tomorrow. That'll be great. That'll be fun. I'll, I'll buy it and I'll install it and that, that'll be the thing we talk about. Change of plans. <laughs> Because the add-on is not a free add-on. It is a uh, $40 add-on. <clears throat> and I try to only spend what has been made by... where When I can, I try to spend what, what has been made from 3D printing and modeling. You know, the like Patreon income and things like that on stuff for this and I had transferred my Patreon balance after I got my new computer and bought a couple add-ons with it into PayPal and then it got eaten up by GoDaddy <laughs> yesterday alright well the little screen share I'll show you the add-on that I was interested in. It's called Mesh Machine. It looks pretty cool because you can take and turn uh, chamfers into fillets and, and back and forth. And um, they're variable, which is cool. And you can, you know, wash out the fillet lines to make a smoother appearance. You can unbevel things. This tool, I won't say it out loud. <laughs> but it could come in handy. But the biggest thing, the biggest reason I wanted is this one right here. Um, anybody who's ever worked in Blender knows that booleans make a mess out of your geometry. 
always do. They, they make an absolute mess out of it. And this Boolean cleanup tool cleans up your geometry automatically instead of having to spend hours, you know, redoing the topology of the model to, to fix things. Good morning, Brian. So that was the biggest reason I wanted it. I watched a couple videos on it uh, yesterday. And so I'll get it. I'll just got to wait until Patreon balance builds up a little more. Which, I had some changes on the Patreon thing uh, today as well. I, I lost a patron. It's always sad to, 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 to lose a patron. <laughs> but, in fairness, um, I haven't been putting it, cranking out as many models for... for patrons lately and that's you know been due a lot to I haven't been home in the last you know month and I'm just now getting getting back into the swing of things and and as I'm getting back into the swing of things I'm having to adjust and getting used to uh, blender 2.8 which is which is different and it's harder and I'm not used to it yet so I had gotten pretty fast in 2.79 and now 2.8, I'm back to, it's it's almost like I'm a complete noob at it again. So, it'll come with time. I'll, you know, I got to stick with it and, and keep hammering away. So, one thing I've been meaning to do, and maybe, maybe this is as good a time as I need to do it. Uh, I have not yet found... Blender 2.79 had a deal down here that was it was changing layers and you could put stuff on one layer and then change layers and 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 all that stuff would be would go away but still be existent on the other layer. I'm not sure how layers work in 2.8. They don't have that little interface down here anymore. For that. So did it go away? Has it been replaced with something else? So maybe that's what we're going to figure out today. Blender 2.8 layers. Layers and collections. Where's the layers panel in 2.8? That's exactly what I want. Where is it? There are no more bit layers in 2.8. Okay. The missing layer panel is stay and unlikely to reappear the scene layer system as it has limitations now how it works is explained in the meantime uh, click the collection center icon in the scene menu okay so it's the, the collections up here now. Oh, okay. So what used to be just clicking on a little box down here to change layers in 2.79, you now, you almost treat layers similarly the way they do in, in Photoshop. So one thing I've been wanting to do is stuff that I reuse over and over until I figure out how to add them into uh, Kit Ops, which is a another add is one of the add-ons that I use the Patreon balance to pay for. Until I figure out how to put those items as objects in Kit Ops, I need a file that's basically like a repository of all of the things I use frequently. That way I don't have to open up different models to pull out one part from it to use on a new model. So I think the easiest way to do that would be for me to create a uh, 
a collection of all that stuff in one file. And so then I would go to that repository anytime I needed it and just go, okay, I need to grab that, I need to grab an axle, I need to grab a snap connector, I need to grab, you know, whatever the case may be. So, is that the one I want? For those who uh, saw Twitter last week, I've started working on um, a Blue Lives Matter version of the Rep Ranger. It was a natural progression already having the uh, the American flag design made. So it was just a matter of making a police looking version and coloring it like the Blue Lives Matter flag. But what I was wanting to do, and, and I don't think it's really, the more I think about it and look at it, going to be possible. I wanted to put a door kit on here and then multi-material, the word police in the door. But given the size of what the door would be, I mean, it's not large. I don't think it's a large enough area to multi-material lettering in the side. I think the lettering would be too small, and I don't think, I think the resolution on the lettering would would uh, not allow it to be 3D printable at that size. So I may just go ahead and go with this as is without doors. Um, oh, and my last trip to St. Louis a couple weeks ago I stopped in Micro Center uh, there in St. Louis on my way uh, home and uh, I did snag me a roll of brown filament I didn't have any like brown because I want to make a multi-material version of this and do brown seats and things like that and so that's in the plans as well is to multi-material this, this lower frame. So collections. So I guess now... Oh, I see. Alright, so if I hide that one... Huh, okay. So, you know, this is a file that started out as a 2.79 file, and it had multiple layers. And I think it looks like it turned those layers into collections, but now... They're... They don't appear to be visible. What have I done? Or what has it done? <laughs> Good morning, Chris Riley and Robbie Mack. Yeah, well, I didn't get anything crazy. All I did was get a roll of brown filament. 
<coughs> the cheap stuff inland. But I needed some some brown because I'm all the time going, okay, well, I want to do the interior of this vehicle. I'd like to do it in brown. Because I think a brown interior would look better when I'm doing, like, uh, some of the khaki-colored vehicles and, and olive drab. I think the brown interior would go better than the black. Um, I didn't. I didn't look at that time. I, that, that was, you know, a couple weeks ago. It was before I decided that I wanted to do this test. Um, and the test I'm speaking of, for those who don't know, is what I want to do. Oh, oh where's it? Where's that? At? Here we go. Um, what I want to do is I want to make a. Um, Replacement light panels. I want to cut these out and make a like snap-in light panel. And I want to make the light panel so that it'll be... The background of it will be silk silver, which I already have some back there. Um, framed in, in black. And then with clear over the top for the headlights and... Um, so like do clear over the top of uh, where's the still getting used to the interface so like clear over the top of that and then orange over the top of that and then do the same thing on the back uh, which this one's not a good one to demonstrate with but because it's sliced into multiple pieces. But a plug-in one here as well where I would do, you know, the whole base would be the silk silver and then, you know, put red, transparent red over the top of it. Because I think if you put, if, if I print it or design it so that it only prints like one or two layers of the transparent colors, over the top of the silk silver, I think it'll give it that depth and pop to make it look more realistic. But I want to try first. I don't want to, you know, jump in and and go buy, you know, a whole roll of transparent red and a whole roll of transparent orange and a whole roll of clear, only to find out that it doesn't look the way I'm thinking it might look in my head, and then be stuck with. Uh, sixty dollars worth of transparent filament that I'll never use. <laughs> ABS benchies. I'd be surprised if you were printing ABS anything else. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of where did I put it? It's back there somewhere. It's in one of those boxes. We'll see which one it is. But yeah, the... I have no desire to print with ABS. So Um, I don't know yet, Chris, but I may be I may be making a trip to Kansas City soon. Nothing's finalized yet. Um, and I haven't even decided if if I'm going to go. I'm I'm conflicted. Um, some some personal family things that I'm struggling with at the moment whether I want to go or not but if I go you know because I really don't want to but I'm afraid if I don't go I'll regret it later so I haven't decided yet uh
but if I go, uh, I'll get in touch with you, and maybe we can get together for you know dinner or something while I'm there. But if I go, I'm I'm getting barbecue while I'm there. I have to. I haven't had good barbecue in forever. I've had what other people call good barbecue, but not what Kansas City people call good barbecue. Get tired of going places where people look, this is, uh, that place is great, their barbecue is awesome, it's amazing. And I'll go in, I'll sit down and, and, and I'll order and, and I'll eat it and I'll go, no, no it's not. <laughs> okay, yeah man, I will. If, if I decide to go, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with you. Well, Robbie, no, no offense to, to, to Ryan, but does he know what Kansas City barbecue tastes like? Because Kansas City barbecue is different than what everybody else considers barbecue. <laughs> Like, I want a burnt-in sandwich from Gates so bad. I, I'm like, if, if there was somebody out there that could freeze it, put it in a cooler, and mail it to me. <laughs> Although, I don't know I don't know how well that'd hold up. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Kansas City, you, you know, you got your dry rubs, and you got your, your sauces, and, and your sauces are, are usually a uh, um, molasses and brown sugar-based sauce so they're they're sweet and smoky and you cook your meat really really slow at a low temperature yeah it um basically if your meat's been cooking for less than 12 hours you did it wrong <laughs> And then which type of wood you smoke the meat over makes all the difference in the world as well. And yeah, it's a and it's a science. It's a, it really is. Um, all the you know famous barbecue in Kansas City. You know they've got they don't just put a particular type of wood in their smoker. They they will they have a mixture of wood. Like they put one log of this kind and three logs of that kind and. It, I mean, it, it it goes downright crazy, but they they invest so much time and effort into it, probably even more than we do into 3D printing. And it shows. Well, that's true. Firefighters are typically good cooks because they, 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 they have lots of time to do it when they're at the firehouse. Um, my When I was growing up, my family had owned a baseball card shop, and our baseball card shop was directly across the street from the, the firehouse. And so while I was working at the baseball card shop, I would watch those guys like, oh, look, they're washing the truck for the third time today. <laughs> and they'd always be out there. They had a little, uh, they had a little remote control robot that looked like a fire hydrant, and they'd always have that out in the driveway playing with it. But granted, Belton was a small town. They didn't go on very many calls. They were there in case they were needed, but they were very seldom needed. I think the biggest bulk of their work was washing and detailing a fire truck. <laughs> yeah, Chris is the only one that uses a log in 3D printing. <clears throat> so anyway, this is uh, this is the next project that I'm going to put the palette through its paces on. It's the Blue Lives Matter rendition of the Rep Ranger. 
Uh, anyway, so what we came here to do in first place was to snag stuff I use repeatedly. Where are the axles? See, Blender is frustrating me right now. Um, and maybe, again, it's because this file was created in 2.79, and now it's being opened in 2.8. But stuff that should not be gone is gone. Oh. Don't tell me I'm going to have to download an old version of Blender and open it up just to be able to still work on some of these old files. Let's open this one and see if the... Okay, the axles are still there in this one. Which, that's another thing on my to-do list. I need to finish the trailer for the... Jet Ski. Alright. So... So, like, things that I will use... Frequently and repeatedly... Things like the axle, probably the wheel, and the tire. I'll grab those. I want to put them in their own file. to save them save this file let's see let's create a new oh I already have a components folder never mind components um, call it parts So now I've got this parts file. And I go to unsorted. I think I'm missing some files. that as well. Parts. Discard changes. Slide that forward. Tap into edit mode. What are you doing? out of it if it was okay <laughs> go into wireframe select those delete them back into
solid view. All right, so what I have here is the snap connectors, grease based. And I can pull the pegs off of that. I don't have to bring in just the pegs. I can I can steal them off of that anytime I need. So we're gonna save the parts file. So see, as I come up with parts that I know I'll be reusing often, I'll put them in here. And then I have, that way I have this one-stop repository for I need to grab a wheel, I need to grab a tire, I need to grab a snap connector, axle, and I can just grab them and bring them into a new model that I'm working on and not have to, you know, remodel it. I can, I can just take the existing one and, and edit it if need be. Um, another thing I need to grab... I guess it's already got its own file. 3D printable spring, ladies and gentlemen, yes, and they work. <sighs> What's that? Oh, okay. I say pre saved and sized. Almost forgot I had <clears throat> this components file. So see when I need a steering wheel, I've already got one designed. I can just grab it and bring it in. Because most of the time all I need is a generic steering wheel. Ratchet joint. So this stuff well, the hinge is useful. There's a hinge I can plug into anything I want. So yeah, I've got this components directory now and I've got, you know, things that I use frequently saved in it. So then I don't have to remodel those things from scratch. <laughs> it might, I don't know, when, when I print them, when I print the spring, on FDM printing, I actually print it laying down on its side, so the side is down on the bed. And then I, uh, when it when it prints that way, it I give it supports where touching the build plate, and that's it. They snap off pretty easy because it's so flexible. And as the, you snap them off, and then it's 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 good. I think it has better strength. laying down on its side, or it seems to, in the tests that I've done. But I would be interested to see if uh, flexible resin could print it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. One thing I've been thinking about doing is making a spring that uses the snap connectors and putting a, you know, snap connector in the bottom and then the, you know, on a little platform with the snap connector. And then on the top, put the uh, the button thing. So then I could design something that literally used the snap connectors that that are used in assembling the, the Rip Ranger. And you would take and just snap the spring into the top and then you would snap the whatever you, you know, we're wanting to be sprung you would snap it into the bottom of the spring and then it'd be done there'd be no gluing although um curiosity i have there is how well the snap connectors would print sideways because i've only to this point printed them in a vertical orientation i don't know if they would print and work on their side. They would definitely require some supports. But again, you know, touching the build plate kind of supports. 
I would think. I don't know. I'll have to give it a try. Alright, so we've got that component file now, just called parts. So now if I need axles, wheels, tires, or snap connectors, I can go here. Oh, there it is. crazy looking in the uh, wireframe when everything's selected. So there's the original, original Rip Ranger file. That's where it all started. Well, once the snap connectors were added. And where is the... I didn't give stuff some good names. Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Although that was something I was playing around with that was looking like it was going to be fun. But what I'm trying to get away from now is printing things that would require supports like under here, that kind of stuff, by breaking it into multiple pieces that snap together. Hmm... No, that's not it. Although, I did design a multi-material grill that I think Roy Holly has tested. I haven't tested yet. Um, for the hammerhead. That's the oh, same file. <laughs> oh, okay. Why is it not? No? You see, I don't understand. So things that I brought in that were designed in Blender 2.79, if they were hidden at the time that I last saved the file in 2.79, they don't seem to be available. See how they're grayed out? They say they're visible, but they're not, and they're grayed out. I'm going to have to Google that and see what's going on there. See why something 
that the last time it was saved in 2.79 was hidden seems to just not be there when opened in 2.8. Or something that was on another layer in 2.79 will be in a collection over here, but the collection isn't viewable. I'm not sure how all these collection things work. In 2.8. See, so I, I'm having a lot of learning curve issues. This is the little sports car that I was designing right before I got the new computer put together. And it had a body on it. And a canopy and all that. And weapons and all that seems to be gone now so I wonder I know on here somewhere I can get the old versions. It's under 2.79. That's interesting. Blender. That doesn't seem to be right. Well, I guess it was still downloading. So we're going to download 2.79 and see if the files are still intact. We're going to download 2.79 and install it. It may be handy if I need to do something quickly and I'm be still better with 2.79. Oh wow, the rain's already moving in. So, just goes to show you, the news said rain would be moving in in the afternoon. There's raindrops on my window right now. Weatherman said afternoon. It's 8.52 in the morning. Morning, Don.
that's real accurate there weather guys it's all cloudy and there's raindrops on my window so maybe they'll be wrong also because they said uh before the rain moved in the heat index would be like 110 today so maybe they'll be wrong about that and it won't be quite so blasted hot which my makerspace is really bad because it's the smallest room in the house and it also has the biggest windows in it so when it's really sunny and hot my makerspace gets hot hot especially if i'm running printers on top of it <laughs> I need to get me some good solar curtains. But when I do that, I'll lose some of the natural light I'm getting from the window. So I'll also have to put some more lighting in here. I guess that's what I need to run. Okay. Try that here in a little bit. I'm going to keep the stream fairly short this morning, I think. But my goal is see if I can find out what happened to... And somebody else has got to be having this problem, too. Uh, Blender 2.8 collection grayed out. the outliner left click on one or shift left click on multiple you yeah. go to view layer clear exclude okay let's try that I'm not seeing that menu. <sighs> you miss me trying to... Trying to make this visible again. Open the menu, go to view layer.
Yeah, I'm not having, I don't have a view layer. Maybe, is that up here? Ah, view layer. I didn't do anything. I've got some individual objects that seem to be just gone. Mm. to have to start over on this thing. There's got to be something in here somewhere I'm missing. Oh, there's something I hadn't thought of. Let's render it. It's there when I render it, so it's still in there. It's still in the file. But for some reason, it's hidden from... The headaches of learning a new software. I just don't understand why they did it so different. Because if I render the scene, it shows up. You can see it. There it is. <laughs> Still on the call. Brian Vines. So it's... The upper body is still there. But for some reason I can't... I thought you'd already given the Mighty Might name to this. Mr. Buttram. To the go-kart. Which the go-kart is definitely smaller than the sports car. The yet to be named sports car. <clears throat> oh. No. This one's this one should be a little bit bigger. Um still needs a lot of detail work added to the front and things like that. But before I can do any of that. I've got to figure out why I can render it and see the upper body. But here in the edit window, it's grayed out. No matter what state of visible I put it in, it doesn't show up. <laughs> I 
Wait. I thought Robbie is his own boss. Actually, when you own your own company, every client you have is your boss. Just like me, my band is my own business, but every bar I play in is my boss. Yeah, so that isn't... Visibility submenu. I don't have a visibility submenu. Oh, there it is. Anybody have any ideas? I'll try hiding all inside and show all inside. No, still no. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's driving me nuts because it's there. I render it and I can see it. But if I wanted to edit this... It's missing. And... Like, there's the upper body, the red part. The red part in the render. That's... That item right there. But it's grayed out. And this guy, you know, he's showing you how to do just to hide the entire collection or bring it back. 
and that might work if that was what I have, but I have individual items in the collection. Object in collection grayed out. Go to the filter, globally disable in viewports, and turn it on. filter There we go. There it is. All right, so if anybody decides to get into Blender and do that filter, the restriction toggles, I didn't have the viewport toggles available and so they were all disabled in the viewport. <sighs> Let's save that. Going insane. <laughs> Alright, I thought I was going to start all over on this thing. And that took way longer than it should have. See, in 2.79, these are all three always there next to an object. Whether the object is visible, whether it's active in the viewport, or renderable. Like if you turn off the render thing, and so, so now I've got that available in my filters and set up right. So if I turn it off in the render, it just won't render it. So there we go. Well, we learned something today. We didn't accomplish anything, but we learned how to fix stuff that's grayed out and to put back something that was in 2.79 by default that is not default in 2.8. Well, I'm going to work on this car some today, but uh, I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten anything. So I'm going to get off here and go eat. I may do another impromptu stream later today uh, since it is my day off and I'm home. But thank you guys for joining me. And uh, sorry, nothing went as planned today. I didn't get to, to purchase the new add-on and try it. And I didn't get to actually work on anything because I spent all my time trying to figure out although I guess we did make um, the parts file to uh, to pull frequently used parts from and uh, and we figured out how to 
make stuff visible that come over from 2.79 that wasn't. So I guess it wasn't a complete loss, and, and this might even be something that I need to do a brief edited video on to show people where to find this, because obviously it's a common occurrence and it's a common problem that lots of people have. So it might be worth it for me to sit down and make a an actual edited video going, is your stuff grayed out? Here's why and how to fix it. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys, and I will see you later. Like I said, I may do an, uh, another impromptu stream later today, but I'm starving and I can't wait any longer. I got to go eat something. So I'll uh, chat with you guys later. See you out there in the World Wide Web. Later.